Hi, I'm Ron Bowman, and this is A Chill Goes Through Her Veins. And I'm here with... Andrew Marlowe. John Huertas. Nathan Fillion. Molly Quinn. And Stana. And Molly Quinn. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we're watching <laughs> Brian Spicer's elegant, creepy opening. Oh. Brian's getting some love. And this was the best dead body person of the year. It was. It with is. respect to all the other ones. This was tough because she was really just resting on uh, rebar and... And it was freezing and, and it was really cold. doused with water. Yeah, yeah, it was freezing and it kept so, soaking her. And she she's has a to stunt girl, right? Perfectly she? still. Yeah. Doesn't matter. She's still somehow controlled. Mm-hmm. She's so good. Out of everyone that I know that watches it, this was, this was her favorite body. Yeah. She somehow controlled hypothermia. Creepy. Now, this episode's a little different than uh, the other episodes we've done where we've had an opening and then we've gone to see something in in Castle's personal life. Uh, We're at episode five in the first season, and we felt it was time to show a little bit about Beckett and some of her backstory. So we decided to come in and stay with her while we come to the crime scene. Well, early bird gets the collar. Yeah. He was here before I was. Oh, finally, you are here. You're going to love this. <laughs> Come on, show's over. This is a great location. Where is this down by the LAX airport? Yeah, this is by the airport. It was very difficult for us finding a construction site location because of all the liability issues that come with it. And you can imagine when you're looking at a construction site how many potential dangers you're going to have if you have a crew down there. Uh, exactly. and, and some of the liability no issues were that. difficult. And we finally found a site that we, we felt was safe enough for us to shoot at. And Is that because there was a hospital right next door? <laughs> uh, could be, could be. In <laughs> uh, this structure here we built yeah, well, for, yeah, uh, within the construction the site for our body. Those are really neat shots that Ryan has us in. Yeah, this is full um, background, full front. Yeah. It's really neat. That, yeah, it's this is a the whole the staging and the yeah. camera choreography with the uh, the angles are just brilliant. Yeah, yeah. it's really good. He listens well. I've taught him uh. everything. <laughs> That's a, a, that that building was supposed to be a hospital, actually. I think is what someone told me that it was like the expansion of the hospital that was next door. Oh, really? Okay. And they couldn't, they couldn't finish it. Doesn't want to be reminded of the crime. So she has to have contact lenses in uh, her eyes that make her eyes look dead, as well as all the makeup on her. And the ice, which was made out of uh, silicone. Yeah, we went through a series of tests to find out how blue to make her skin, how white to make her skin. We had to do a, a series of screen tests to see how it would read on. Had to freeze a lot of people. Yep, had to freeze a lot of people. Mostly interns. <laughs> it's like life before TiVo. So, so Andrew, talk about what it takes for you to That's integrate. That's my mom's favorite laugh, by the way. Yes. <laughs> she loves that. <laughs> what it, what's, what's the trick of integrating Castle into homicide detectives that feels natural and okay and you know maybe Nathan can talk about that too well I, I think mostly it's it's the attitude of the character and having a character's perspective that that can be off kilter but also honest for that character you know we're, we're aware that we're dealing with a, a dead body and we don't want to be jokey but Castle is irreverent by nature and the homicide cops having seen so much death uh, you know, certainly have their gallows humor. So bringing him into the scene is 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 just bringing him in based on who his character is. And, and Nathan, you can talk a little bit more about how you access that. How do you how do you deal with being sort of the what in this scene looks like the welcome outsider? You know, is it by this point, you know, you've done this is the fifth story, and they just accept you, or do you feel like you have to sort of earn your invitation every day? Something I appreciate and, and, and I like about Castle is that he's a very intelligent man. He's an intelligent guy, but he's 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 never uh, afraid of learning something. He, he always walks into this as, as though he has something to learn. He's trying to learn. He's always watching. He's always observing. You know, he offers his, his, his uh, expertise at time to time. He's, his two cents are worth, but uh, he's not afraid to learn. He certainly in that moment has something to share because he's, he's, his approach to solving the crime is, is really talking about the story of the crime. And in this one, he's saying, okay, you know, we know what the end of the book looks like. Let's work backwards a little bit to figure out how this person would have arrived there. So where they're looking at evidence, He's trying to figure out what the story was. This is Tamala Jones. She plays our medical examiner on the show. Mr. Muna drug possession. 
And she is a constant source of entertainment. She's really Sexiest fun. corner ever. So, Stana, uh, um, we're not talking about the morgue, are we? No, she's talking about <laughs> Beckett's um, keeping Castle in place. You know, how does how do you deal with that scene? Because it looks like in the previous scene, you're very comfortable with him in the room. Although he is there by invitation, sort of on a you know prohibition, uh, a probation um, slip. What? How, how do you how do you deal with him being there? Is it you just accept it, or is it as long as he's within his little box, you're okay? I think initially, the first couple of episodes, she begrudgingly uh, allows him in on her cases, but he brings a lot of value in in his thoughts and in his theories and i think by this episode episode five um there's a bit of a mutual respect that's being built and she enjoys him but in a very secret kind of way enjoys mm. his thoughts and theories i want to i want to just touch on the bedroom that we created for beckett just briefly, I know that we've talked about all of the rooms and, and uh, scene creation already in episode one's commentary. Um, but Andrew gave me a wonderful opportunity in that I, I got to be a little bit a part of the uh, creation of Beckett's um, room. And it was fabulous because we got to work with Alfred Soleil, who's our, our uh, set designer. And Andrew said when we started it off, he said, look, I think she lives in uh, a more... What, what part of New York's side would you say that you thought that Beckett lived in? East Village. East Village, which was a little bit like more bohemian. And I thought that was really neat and a wonderful opportunity because... In my mind, Beckett was a regular, normal girl before all of this stuff happened to her that put her on this this path of, of crime solving and stuff. And so there's kind of like a secret world to her that we haven't fully explored until maybe episodes 9 and 10, where you start seeing a real lighthearted side and maybe a bit more fun in her. And I thought that by creating something that was really colorful in, in her, her house life, it um, kind of indicated that in her background. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I think that characters are more interesting when they're juxtapositions and what lives on the surface and what you choose to show other people isn't necessarily who you are inside. And one of the things we like to do with Beckett is to uh, reveal her life through the little cracks. So you get those moments of insight and it doesn't all come tumbling out, but it intrigues you enough to, to want to know more. Whereas I think with Castle, everybody kind of knows the same guy. You know, uh, what you see is what you get. She's much more guarded, and, and I think she has a lot going on under the surface. And part of that in creating that space was... She is a flower that unfolds. <laughs> unfolding. Hey, Beckett. Yeah? Part of that in creating the space was we had, uh, we had like ancient art or, or books that referenced ancient art and there's a lot of like um, anthropology and history and so on in her bedroom and there's a lot of color and a lot of a Bedouin feel. It was really neat to be able to play with that. Maybe he and his wife got into something. to spend more time in there. Sounds really cool. <laughs> No, uh, no, no, I mean the show. <laughs> you think she's 15-year-old in here, okay? I, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> Nathan, help. <laughs> You're on your own. He's no good. <laughs> We're solving a murder castle. Something I love that Chavis Dever always does, he's always carrying a castle book. Yeah. He's always huh? reading Richard Castle. That, something that happened on the pilot when we shot one and two together, and I can't remember if it was, and he'll maybe speak to this when he does his, his part, but um, he wanted to know what he was doing, and I think this was part of his initial hazing, is that we were all ribbing him for being the new guy, and uh, one thing he wanted to be up on was, you know, the reading of what Castle, what was, you know, what, what's Castle's writing chops, and uh, he made it his thing, it was his idea. This is Bill Smitrovich, wonderful guest actor amongst the many that we had on the show. You know, he uh, told me on, on set that he didn't get his first professional acting job on screen until he was close to 40 years old. Really? Yeah. A lot of stage before that? A lot of stage before that. Um, in, like, small rural Pennsylvania or something, mm. I think it was what it was. But he... Melanie was you know, not once he got started, I mean, he just not stopped. Yeah. yeah. This woman here that we have is Canadian, and 
another was, one? Well, it was weird because almost every episode had two Canadian guest stars, and we discovered them. They weren't, like, obvious. I thought obvious. we were going to have one per episode. That was enough. <laughs> when, when did Canada become, you know... The, We're infiltrating. Yeah, the, the acting cabal. Mm -hmm. I've, never got to, I've never gotten to guest star on any Canadian television shows. 